it frankly is coming from all segments of the market the affordable housing segment or the middle income lower income hmm. uh, e ews segment was very strong for a period of 3 to 4 years while the upper end of the market the higher income group was relatively slow between 2017 and 2020 but over the last one year we have started seeing whilst the momentum in the yeah. uh, middle income and lower income has continued we've started seeing a pick up uh, on and a quite a significant pick up in demand from the higher income groups so cities like mumbai delhi bangalore pune uh, hyderabad chennai all of these cities are showing strong growth so if you look at our average loan amount a year ago it was about 27 lakhs of rupees mm -hmm. and if we were to look at an average our average loan amount in the current year it is 31 lakh 90000 rupees and if we were to look at specifically for this quarter it is 32 32 lakh and 70000 rupees which means that we are started seeing a pick up even in the higher income groups hmm. which was not the case a year ago hmm. but kk what visibility do you currently have on your individual loan books as well as the loan non individual loan book as well because clearly your disbursements have been very strong and individual disp disbursements like you just highlighted for the month of october itself were indeed the highest ever in a non quarter um, end month well we see strong visibility largely by virtue of the fact that in terms of affordability honestly in my view this has been for for more than a decade the best time to look to buy a house there are several reasons for that and interest rates is only one of those reasons but it's coming coming first to interest rates interest rates are as low as they ever get and uh, that's one reason but more importantly is the affordability ratio so if you look at the last 4 years from 2017 to 2000 21 now income levels have generally increased by about 7 and 1/2 to 8% a year consistently maybe did not increase in the covid year but generally they've increased by 7 and 1/2 8% property prices today are no higher than what they were in 2017 and therefore effectively the cost of a house as a multiple of the annual income of an individual has 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 made housing so much more affordable this ratio has come down quite significantly So, if you take say a 30, 32% increase in income over those four years and stable property prices, you can obviously gauge the fact that affordability has improved so much. So, this is the primary consideration why we've seen this pick up in uh, demand for real estate all over the country. And what COVID has done is it has made it more imperative. for most people most families to look for bigger and larger homes yeah absolutely okay uh kk on asset quality given that you know clearly first quarter was hit because of covid second quarter as well as you mentioned in your conference call asset quality improved particularly in individual loan segment seeing the current pace of recovery what is it that you can share with me in terms of your asset quality and whether or not the performance going to continue to get better for the entire financial year well i would assume that uh, if we don't have any major third wave of covid and let's keep our fingers crossed we don't have that i would say that the retail business the individual business will keep improving month after month so self employed customers in particular who face some difficulty during the first wave and also during the second wave their businesses would have already started normalizing and hopefully over the next 3 4 months as the momentum when the economy continues their businesses will continue to do well and therefore their repayment capacity will keep uh, keep improving on the non individual front we have classified certain loans as stage 2 loans certain loans as stage 3 loans we put down some very clear parameters uh, for uh, you know those loans to meet quarter after quarter we continue to evaluate those parameters and wherever we see that those parameters are not being met we would look to downgrade those loans from stage 2 to stage 3 Having said that you would see that the percentage of non performing loans has come down mm. we were at uh, we've seen about a 25 to 27 basis points improvement in the level of non performing loans our individual np non performing loan level in september stands at 1.1% and i would hope that in when we finish the year we would be at a lower level than this on the non individual front we've seen a marginal decline we were 4.87% in the first quarter we are 4.69% in the second quarter collection efficiency is somewhere in the range of around 98 or marginally over 98%
But Keki, from an industry standpoint, you know, the total portfolio of affordable housing companies has seen an uptick, you know, we've seen a boost in disbursements as well. Can we see a similar trend for HDFC going forward as well? Uh, how do you see this theme playing out towards home loan growth going forward as well, given that 30% actually accounts for the low income segment? So, uh, Aisha, the low-income segment growth has been as strong as it was in the past. It's just that if you look at the latest numbers, because the high-income ma market has also started seeing a pickup, the proportion of uh, middle-income, or sorry, the proportion of uh, EWS and LIG in terms of incremental loans is slightly lower than what it was in the first quarter. So earlier, let's say a year ago, mm. uh, the customers in the economically weaker section and lower income group in number terms would have constituted 32 percent of our total customers total new loans uh, now it is 30 percent but that 30 percent is not because the affordable housing segment has not increased it has increased but it's just that the non in the all right the and that brings us to the end of this edition of the market it's been an absolute pleasure bringing it to you happy dhanteras once again from all of us here on et now